Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so first up in cholesterol synthesis, stage one is basically making mevalonate. So we said that mevalonate, we make it by combining three acetyl-CoA's. We're going to start here with two acetyl-CoA's, and I've numbered them here um, as one, two, three, four for their carbons, two two-carbon units. We're going to bring them together and actually connect the second carbon with to the third carbon. We're going to connect, make a connection here between these two carbons and kick off this coenzyme A. So we're going to kick that coenzyme A off, coash, and we're going to get this acetoacetyl-CoA, and which is just a four-carbon acyl-CoA. And this is done by thiolase, which you might have, or you might be able to recall, uh, thiolase was in beta oxidation. It basically catalyzed the reverse of this, right? When we'd have an acyl-CoA, it would cut off um, uh, an acetyl-CoA by adding a coenzyme A. So thiolase can catalyze the forward and reverse reaction here. And it happens to be the first step in mevalonate synthesis. Once we have this acetoacetyl-CoA, we're going to add the, the other acetyl-CoA. So this, this next acetyl-CoA, again, right here with two carbons, that's going to be added. And we're going to connect that. We're going to connect carbon number six to carbon number three. So it's kind of a weird little connection here. We're going to connect carbon number six to carbon number three here. And what's going to happen is that this, this carbonyl group oxygen is now going to become an OH. Um, and this, this carbon number four gets kicked up here to become a methyl group on this chain. Okay. And of course, this uh, coenzyme A leaves. What we get is this molecule called beta hydroxy beta methylglutyryl CoA, which is a six carbon molecule. And it's otherwise known as HMG CoA. The, the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called HMG CoA synthase which you might have come across uh, some other time. Um, I haven't actually talked about it, but there, um, there is another isozyme of HMG-CoA synthase. And um, I have a question over here listed, where is the other isozyme and what pathway or process is said uh, isozyme in involved in or with? Um, before I answer that question, I want to say that these first few steps that are bound here by this sort of uh, uh, light pink bracket, um, these first two steps occur in the cytosol of the cell. So this HMG-CoA synthase is the cytosolic isozyme. And the, the other isozyme is located in the mitochondria. And the pathway or process that it's involved in is ketone body synthesis, which is something that we actually haven't talked about in any of my videos quite yet. Uh, at least as of the recording of this video, uh, but it's something that I may discuss another time. One thing that I do want to mention about HMG-CoA is kind of breaking down its name to see if it makes a little bit of sense, because this is kind of a crazy molecule, and I remember when I first saw it, it looked kind of weird to me, and I didn't really totally understand the name, but um, I understand it now, and I kind of want to see if you guys uh, can help if, if I can get you guys to think about this name and this structure uh, fairly well. So, um, uh, the beta hydroxy beta methyl part that should make a little bit of sense when we think about the, the fact that when we have a carbonyl and we have a carbon immediately adjacent to it, that carbon immediately adjacent to it is an alpha. That's really small. Let me make that a little bit bigger. It's the alpha carbon. So that's an alpha carbon there, an alpha carbon there, immediately adjacent to carbonyl groups. The next carbon over would be the beta carbon. So here we have this carbon being the beta carbon. So on this beta carbon, there's a hydroxy group and a methyl group. So beta hydroxy, beta methyl should make sense. Now what about this glutyryl portion, glutyryl CoA? The CoA should make sense because there's a coenzyme A attached there. But the glutyryl, well glutyryl, I think about glutamate. So let's kind of compare this structure to the glutamate that I've drawn here. So if we think about the right side of this molecule, we've got this carboxyl group, just like we have over here, right? We have this carboxyl group, okay? And in glutamate, at the alpha carbon, we have an amino group. Here, at this alpha carbon, we don't have anything. But in the R group of glutamate, the amino acid, we have CH2, CH2, and then another carboxyl group. Here, we don't have a CH2, but we do have a carbon, and then another carbon, and then what would have been a, car a carboxyl group if this uh, coenzyme A wasn't here. Okay. So 
this the, this basically is a, a, a gluteral CoA if we ignore the, the beta hydroxy and beta methyl portion. Well, really, the only difference between these guys is that there's a coenzyme A here, right? And at the beta portion, there's two substituents, the hydroxyl group and the methyl group. So hopefully that name makes a little bit more sense. And if you have to memorize the structure for any course that you're taking, that breakdown hopefully helps a little bit. So all of these reactions so far to make HMG-CoA occurred in the cytosol. Next up, we're going to go to the endoplasmic reticulum, where, if you recall, uh, it's the organelle that lipid synthesis really occurs, and we're talking about cholesterol synthesis. Cholesterol is a lipid. So we're going to take HMG-CoA, and we're going to turn it into mevalonate. So that's the last step in this process. And uh, what basically happens is that the part of the molecule that changes is this left side, kind of labeled in brown, uh, the... the, the um, the carbonyl group becomes an alcohol, so there was a reduction done there, and we also got rid of this coenzyme A. So the coenzyme A portion fell off, and there was also a reduction happening here. And so a reducing agent must have been required. And in this case, we're talking about biosynthesis, so it should make sense that we're adding NADPH. And there's actually two NADPHs required here, and we're going to get off two NADP pluses. Um, NADPH, I think is what I said. I hope I didn't mess that up. But NADPHs are used here. Um, and we get, uh, we get mevalonate. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is HMG-CoA reductase. And uh, there are a bunch of stars around this. And the reason why is because this particular step is the committed step. This is the committed step in cholesterol biosynthesis, in addition to being the committed step, meaning that this mevalonate is now committed to cholesterol synthesis. Um, I just totally spelled that wrong. There's supposed to be synthesis. Okay. This molecule mevalonate is committed to cholesterol synthesis, but also this, this step is the rate limiting step of the entire process. So not only is mevalonate committed to it, but this reaction happens the slowest, and thus it's the, the rate limiting step. So it's going to be highly regulated. So this is the control point for cholesterol synthesis. So it's definitely something you should keep in mind. Okay. So now that we've made mevalonate, we're done with stage one. So we're on to stage two. So I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks, and happy studying.